Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to church this morning. It's a delight to see each one of you here this morning, and I trust you're here ready to worship the Lord uh, in truth and in spirit and in song and in testimony and in prayer, and that we just sense God's presence today. That's my desire. Uh, my heart this morning is crying out to God that we need more of Him, and uh, I need more of Him personally. We need more of Him as a congregation, and I'm just believing in God to help us today in every way, and that we would sense His presence and spirit, and that we would respond to it. Nothing you know, to me, it doesn't make sense to be in a church service and to worship God, to sense his presence and not be changed by it. If we're here this morning, we're here to worship God and to become more like him. And so if God speaks to us today, if God speaks to you, just say yes to him. Respond however he would have you to respond. And, uh, and let's just continue to walk in the light as he's in the light. If you don't know Christ today as your personal savior, I've got good news for you. He's here to save and redeem and to forgive whatever sin you might have. And that he can transform a life into something that's good and holy and pure. Praise God today, this morning. I want to invite you to stand for an opening word of prayer, after which Brother Anthony will lead us in a couple of songs. And I just encourage you to sing with all that you have, worship God uh, for who he is and how good he is, and let's just praise and adore him today in our worship. Father, we thank you for this day, for this time that we've set aside in this week to come to worship you. Father, we admit that our mind is everywhere but here perhaps at times, and we admit, Lord, that we are in complete dependency upon you this morning. But Lord, we're so thankful to know that you have promised to be with us in times of trouble. You've promised to be with us where two or three are gathered in your name. You're in the midst of us. And so, Lord, today we proclaim the name of Christ today. Lord, we plead the blood of Christ over this service and over this time together this morning. And may you reign supreme and, and in full uh, glory this morning. May you draw us closer to you. May your presence invade this place and speak to us, Lord. And may we respond to you in perfect obedience. And we'll thank you for the good and the victory that we won this morning. We ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. Remain standing if you're able to. Anthony's coming to lead us in our singing today. We're going to start off with To God Be the Glory on number 36. Yeah. 
Thank you. You may be seated. Isn't he good today? Yes. Amen. He surely is great, not just in his size or ability, but in his power to be able to save and to transform and redeem. He's great this morning, and he is worthy of praise, adoration, attention, and uh, obedience this morning. What an amazing thought that God did not spare his only son, but willingly gave his son to die in the place of you and I for our sins. And when we stop and think about how, how uh, much that has impacted our world, friends, it has changed everything that we know. Everything. It has changed uh, every level of existence. That uh, redemptive work on Calvary has changed our society, has changed our world. Now, we look at our world today and you think, well, there's not much trace of God's redemptive work. Well, perhaps uh, not, but think about our world without the grace of God. And let, just let that ruminate in your mind a little bit of how far away we would be and how evil and corrupt we would be as a country and as a world and a society and as a person without the grace of God. There's a phrase that uh, my in-laws often say that reminds me, uh, gives me perspective on things. It says, there go I, if not for God's grace. And uh, friends, without his grace, without the redemptive work on Calvary, without his blood being shed for our sins, uh, we would be lost in probably, uh, in probably living eternity in a devil's hell right now. But by the grace of God, we have hope and freedom and forgiveness and deliverance. And we have that hope of going to heaven one day and seeing Jesus face to face, our Redeemer and uh, our Deliverer. Praise God this morning. We want to pray together this morning and remember the requests that are in our bulletin. Uh, you see them here. Uh, we want to continue to pray for Jim Colburn and the physical needs that uh, he represents and praying for uh, Sue Colburn as well this morning and praying that God would strengthen and encourage her. I believe she received um, a blood treatment uh, maybe earlier this last week. And so we're praying that God would be with Sue and strengthen her uh, in a difficult time that she's going through with uh, treating the bone uh, marrow cancer that she has. We're also praying for um, Brother Sister Spear. It's good to see Sister Carolyn here today. We're praying for, uh, for, um, for she, her, whatever the grammatically correct phrase is there. We're praying for Sister Spear, and uh, she's due to have uh, surgery on her foot uh, the first of next month. And then we're praying for Brother Randall, um, who is recovering from shingles. And so we thank the Lord for uh, him being um, able to, well, she being able to be out and not be contagious uh, from him. But we're praying that God would help him as he heals a uh, very uncomfortable uh, uncomfortable uh, experience there. If you've ever had shingles, you know what we're talking about. So be praying for Brother Randall this morning. We're praying for Vern Coward on uh, Friday. Uh, he had a double bypass open heart surgery in Indianapolis, and uh, the surgeons uh, surgeon said he was a textbook surgery. And uh, as as er, as recent as last evening, um, he was he had all of his uh, tubes and lines taken out except for his chest tube, and uh, they were they were working to get him out of ICU and into a regular room for recovery. And uh, so we thank the Lord for God's help in Brother Vern's life and, um, and the uh, help that he gave through surgery. And so be praying for Brother Vern and, and, uh, and his family as they are going through a lot of adjustments right now with the, with the open heart surgery and other things. We're also praying for Debbie Sanders. Debbie is uh, a lady that uh, lives or lived down in the trailer court. And uh, several weeks ago, we requested prayer for the residents in the trailer court as it was under new ownership and uh, they were being um, they were being expected to either I think update their trailers to a, a newer trailer at, within a certain year uh, of model model year and I think the lot rent was going up and it was forcing uh, everyone if not some of them if not all of them out and uh, Debbie was one of those that was that was uh, not able to meet those requirements and on top of that she fell out of her wheelchair uh, after she was trying to help somebody along fell out of her wheelchair and broke her shoulder and so she's in uh, pain, but also in the middle of a life transition. So be praying for Debbie. Sister Mincer has worked with Debbie uh, for years, and, uh, and perhaps others have as well. So let's pray for Debbie Sanders this morning, that God would especially be near to her and encourage her, provide, uh, provide somewhere for her to live, and also uh, give healing to her shoulder. Uh, there are other requests. We want to pray for uh, a man by the name of Roger Gales. Roger tunes our pianos here at the school and church. And uh, Roger had a surgery just recently and, uh, and is uh, struggling with recovery from that. And so let's pray for Roger uh, for his healing and comfort 
in a time of, of, um, of discomfort. We're also praying for Ken Litzinger. Ken had, um, had a, a, an outpatient operation on Wednesday, I think it was, and uh, Wednesday morning, and uh, then was back in the hospital uh, Friday, I believe it was, with uh, he had torn a stitch, and so he went back in, and uh, there, uh, he's under strict orders to take it easy. And so we're praying for Ken today and uh, for his healing and recovery and uh, that God would be near to him. Uh, and we're also praying for Leanne Belcher. Uh, I spoke with Dale on the phone yesterday, and uh, Leanne had a um, scan done a couple of, maybe a couple of weeks ago, and the initial reports are that she has uh, stage one breast cancer, and they're still waiting on more uh, reports to come back. But uh, we're praying for Dale and Leanne, and I, I asked permission to, to request prayer for her, and so um, they're, in, they're in, in desire of prayer. I think they're away this weekend on, on something unrelated, but we're praying in regardless for Leanne and uh, for her physical situation and, and praying for she and Dale as they go through this together. There are spiritual needs, um, Marsha Parker, Kent Hiles, and those of our loved ones who are unsaved and uh, situations in our families, we're praying about those today. We're also praying for unspoken requests, Sister Spear has an, has an urgent unspoken request we're praying about, and we're asking that God would help intervene in this situation. We're praying for our nation, our president and vice president, praying for our school, uh, for Mr. Young and the faculty and staff and the students, and uh, praying for these situations. God knows uh, our situations. He knows exactly what's going on right now, and uh, we need not uh, pray to inform God, but we pray to submit to him and to trust him and to leave our burdens at his feet. And to remind ourselves, remind the enemy, remind whoever may be listening to our prayers that God's on the throne and God is ruler of this world and uh, our needs are subject to him and we can trust him with the results. And so I'm inviting you to stay at this time for, for prayer and uh, I'm going to pray here from the microphone over this list. I encourage you to pray where you are uh, according to the needs that you have and uh, let's just lift our voices and our hearts together in a time of prayer to God today. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we uh, do a boldly approach your throne, not in arrogance or in pride, but full well knowing that you have invited us. Father, we take comfort and consolation this morning in knowing that you are here and with us, and you're inviting us to come to worship you in spirit and truth, but Lord, to come and bring our knees to you and bring our burdens to you and to cast our anxieties on you, for you care for us, to cast our cares on you, to, to take on your yoke and to come under walking alongside of you, for your yoke is easy, your burden is light. And, and Father, we just do that this morning. We come to you in prayer, Lord, not out of habit or out of ritual, out of form, but Lord, because we recognize, we recognize our need for you. We recognize the good that it is for our congregation to unite together in prayer. We recognize, Lord, that that we are nothing without you and our strength is, com is comprised and bound up in a life of prayer and communion with you, Father. And so, Lord, we come to you in prayer this morning asking that you intervene in the, in the situations that are on our prayer list today. You are the great creator. You are the great God that we've sung about this morning. You are the one who has the power to forgive and to redeem and to transform and to deliver. And you're the one that we look to today. Father, we pray that you would bless in the needs that are mentioned this morning, the ones that are on our prayer list, the ones that are in our hearts and on our voices and on our lips today. We know that you hear the prayers of the righteous people today. You hear the prayers of those who are walking in fellowship with you. And so, Father, we just ask you would hear the prayers this morning of these people. Lord, we know there are physical needs and we're concerned about them, Lord. There are physical needs. We think of Jim Colburn today and his physical concerns and his throat and swallowing muscles. Lord, we're praying specifically for those needs this morning. We're praying for Sue Colburn today as she battles uh, this uh, cancer in her bone marrow. Lord, you know about this and we pray that you give her strength and give her encouragement, dear Lord. And may you comfort her and lift her up, oh God. We pray for uh, Ken Litzinger this morning and the, the, the operation he had this week and the complications that came afterward. Lord, just give him healing and give him relief from, from pain and discomfort, Lord. Give his body a, a speedy recovery and may he be able to quickly resume his responsibilities there at jo his job and his work and his home. Father, we pray for Leanne Belcher this morning and this uh, discouraging and, and scary prognosis she's received of this 
stage one breast cancer, Lord, we're praying that you would be with Leanne and that you would strengthen her. Lord, be with the family, be with Dale, and be with their children and grandchildren, Lord, and those that are affected, be with Leanne's sisters, Lord, those that are uh, helping to carry this burden with her, Lord, we pray you'd strengthen her and enable her, Lord, that you would help her to, to keep her eyes fixed on you and to realize that you have a plan, to realize that you're good in the midst of storms and you're good in the midst of discouraging news, and Father, we just pray you'd strengthen her and Dale in a special way. Father, we pray you would be with uh, the Spears this morning. We're praying for Sister Carolyn as she nears the date for her foot to get operated on and relieve pain and discomfort there. We pray you give her strength and enablement, Lord, to, uh, to uh, go about the responsibilities that she has. Lord, we pray for Randall today as he's recovering from this bout with shingles. And Lord, we thank you that he's in recovery mode. He's able to be in the recovery stage. We pray that you would give him healing quickly and relief from discomfort, Lord. And may you just uh, ease, the, ease the soreness and the, the piercing pain, Lord. And may he sense your presence and your, uh, uh, your uh, physical healing in his body this morning. Father, we pray for Brother Vernon Coward today. We thank you for the way you uh, protected him throughout the open heart surgery, the way that you uh, were with his family and, and with us, Lord, as we were there. We thank you, Lord, for your hand that's been upon him as he's recovered and, and uh, the, uh, the good report of encouragement we've received from the doctors. We pray, Lord, that you would continue to be with Vern and strengthen him, Lord, and, and uh, surround him with your presence. Enable him, Lord, to minister there where he is, Father, and may you strengthen he and Sharon and their children and May you just enable them, Lord, to, to trust in you more and to strengthen their resolve and their faith in you during this time of, of concern. Father, we pray for Debbie Sanders today. We thank you for uh, your provisions for her already. And we just pray you would be with her as she looks for uh, a place to live, Lord, as she seeks healing for her shoulder, as she uh, experiences these discomforts and ailments, Lord. We pray you would accompany her, Lord. Send your presence to be with her, O oh God, and may she sense your nearness, and may she sense the love of your people and, and the, uh, the power of your presence to, to encourage and to strengthen her mind and body today. Father, we pray for Roger Gales this morning. We, uh, we don't know him real well, but Lord, we know that he uh, works on our pianos. We know, Lord, that he uh, is, is under in need of prayer this morning. And so, Father, we're praying you would be with Roger, that you would touch his body wherever it might need a, a healing touch today and relief from discomfort. We pray that you would give him uh, the comfort and, and hope of, of uh, knowing that there's people of God that are praying for him and people that are concerned about him. And though he may just tune our pianos, we're concerned about his welfare and his well-being. And so, Lord, we pray you would be with Roger today and strengthen him in, in a special way. Father, you know the other needs this morning, the, the spiritual needs that are around us, Lord. They're probably, if we were to take the time and be transparent, there are more spiritual needs than physical needs here today. But oftentimes we give more attention to the physical needs when really all that matters is the spiritual needs. And so, Father, we just pray you'd come today and bless and help. And, Lord, we know that there's no good done unless your presence is in the middle of it. There's nothing really effectively that's accomplished unless you do the work through us. So, Father, we pray that you would do your work in the spiritual needs, Lord. Would you draw us, Lord, and would you, uh, would you convict of sin, and would you help to reprove, and would you help to, to disciple us, Lord? Would you help to draw us and shape us into your image today? Father, we pray for our country this morning, and for President Biden and Vice President Harris today, those that make decisions over us. Father, we pray that you would guide them and direct them and lead them, bring our nation to a place of of revival, Lord, a place of seeking after you. We're reminded that as the family goes, so goes the church, and so goes the community, and so goes the country. And so, Father, we pray that you would begin to do revival in our homes and in our families, to moms and dads and, and children and teenagers. Lord, would you stir up something within us, a deep desire and longing for more of you, no matter how long we've been walking with you, one minute or one millennium. Lord, we pray that you would help us just to desire and seek you more than we ever have before. And Father, as we seek you in, in humility, as we seek you, Lord, in, in, in sincerity, Lord, we know that you will promise to work and promise to, to, to be found. You said when we seek you with our whole heart, then you'll be found. And so, Father, we pray that you would be found of those who seek you, Lord, and that you would do revival in our country. Father, start with us this morning. Start with me today. Lord, start with my family. Start with my wife and kids. Start with our home, Lord. And may you just accomplish your will through, uh, through individuals today. Father, we pray for our school.
We thank you for each one who works, who serves, who volunteers, who whether they're getting paid or not paid, each one who helps the, helps the wheels go around, Lord. We thank you for each one of them and pray you would lead them and guide them and bless them, Lord. Be with our students and bless them, Lord, and, and uh, give them a, 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 a special sense of your helping and enabling, Lord, whether they realize it or not. May they at one point or another look back and say, wow, God helped me through my years at Stone City Christian Academy, and I was changed because of that place. Lord, we pray you'd be with the unspoken needs today. Lord, you know about Sister Spears' request and the uh, urgency of it, Lord, the, uh, the, the, the deep need that's there. Father, we're believing that you can work. We're believing, Lord, that you have the power to do this. And so, Father, we pray in faith believing that you would work the situation out for their good and your glory and that your name would be magnified through all of it. Father, for the remainder of this service, we pray and commit into your hands. Lord, whatever is done may bring honor and glory to your name. May you just continue to bless this place and these people, Lord. We're ready to, to receive whatever you have for us, Lord. We readily admit that we may have this place packed out and every, every inch on this pew may be covered, but Lord, if your presence does not abide with us and does not come and minister, it's all just vain and empty. And so, Lord, we pray that the group who's gathered this morning would not leave this place without having been able to say we've sensed the presence of God and we have been able to respond in obedience to whatever you said. And so, Lord, move upon us, we pray. Guide and direct in every way, and may your name be glorified above all else. And all these things we ask in the name of Jesus this morning. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. Amen. Well, God is good. He is worthy of praise. And I'm so thankful we have a God that we can go to, and we can pray to, and we can know that He hears, we can know that He's uh, one who answers prayers, he's not um, some graven image or some inanimate object, he's more than uh, just an idea, he's a living being who's alive today and uh, ruling today in heaven and his spirit reigns on earth and uh, is active in our lives and world and uh, we just uh, praise him and worship him and, and give our needs to him and leave them there, amen? Yeah. amen. Yes, that's a big part of prayer is leaving them there. Uh, praying, believing, surrendering, and, and allowing God, allowing Lord, the Lord to be Lord over every circumstance and, uh, and trusting and getting up and moving forward on to action. We have some announcements this morning I want to, I want to remind you of and a couple of them to tell you for the first time. Of course, I try to sometimes or oftentimes I try and go in chronological order. So tonight is the first event that's happening after this morning service, tonight at 6 o'clock evening service right here in the sanctuary and, uh, and I invite you to come to that at 6 o'clock. And uh, you will not, I trust, I don't think, you'll regret coming to that. The Lord has been helping us with that. And it's a, it's a good time of, of uh, hearing from God's word, spending time around the front of the altars. Those who are willing to come, we spend time praying around the front as a church family. And, um, and a, little more, um, a little more family style service, if you will. And uh, extra time for testimonies, prayer requests. And, uh, and so I invite you to come to that 6 o'clock and then a Bible lesson uh, there as well. And then uh, this week you see in your bulletin there, uh, board meeting is tomorrow night. And that applies to uh, some of you, but uh, all of you can be praying about that. And, uh, and then senior sisters are meeting uh, this Tuesday at 1.30 p.m. at Golden Corral. And so if you're a uh, sister in the Lord and you're a senior citizen then uh, you are invited to go to that. I guess I shouldn't put the parameter on senior sister. If you want to go and, and, uh, and, and have a meal with some ladies, go at 1.30 at Golden Corral. Uh, whether you're a senior citizen or not, you can go to that uh, 1.30 Golden Corral. And uh, I, they met, uh, I think they had 12 or so. Sister Shirley, yes. Sorry, it's not Tuesday, it's Thursday. Thursday, you're right. It's the 25th. Thank you very much. Yes, it's in my bulletin. I was just saying the wrong date. Thank you. Uh, Thursday. Yes, I was waxing elephants about Tuesday. Um, no, uh, Thursday. All of that in your mind, Thursday. Okay, Thursday. Uh, Monday board meeting. Tonight, church, 6 o'clock, Monday board meeting. Thursday, senior sisters. And, uh, and all of that applies to that date, 25th. Uh, and then this weekend, Friday and Saturday, the encounter seminar is taking place. And I've, uh, I've printed off a, a piece of paper that has uh, more details on it. 
um, that I failed to post, but it's printed on the printer, um, that I failed to post on the bulletin board. I'll do that after service, or if somebody um, wants to take it upon them to go grab that and post it, you're welcome to do that at the appropriate time. Um, but it will be there at some point today, and it has more information. It starts Friday night at, at 6.30, and it will go till about 9 o'clock. Um, if you need to bring a tent and camp out here so you get to bed on time, that's fine. If, if you uh, want to stay in our camper, you're welcome to do that so you don't drive home. Whatever it is, I know it's going to be late, um, but uh, 6.30 to 9 tonight, we plan to have coffee, we plan to have drinks and some, um, some snacks on Friday night. Uh, and then Saturday morning at 9 o'clock, we'll start again. And uh, we plan to have coffee and donuts um, for that, maybe, uh, maybe some fruit to those uh, who would be uh, conscious of what they're putting in their bodies. Uh, there may be some fruit on Saturday morning. Uh, but regardless, we plan to have refreshments Saturday morning. We plan to serve uh, deli-style lunch Saturday afternoon. And then um, the, the um, uh, conference, the seminar will be over at 4 o'clock on Saturday. And so uh, you're on your own for dinner after that. But I uh, want to make it uh, easy to do um, for you to come. And I know it's the busiest time of the year. I know that it's a Saturday with warm weather and every day that goes by, the sun sets a minute sooner. I know that, um, I'm, I'm experiencing that in my own life. And so I understand these, these hours are precious, but I invite you if you can to come and we'll be meeting in the Student Activity Center, by the way, that's a very important detail. We'll be meeting in the Student Activity Center um, over there in the cafeteria. And so uh, we'll be making arrangements to um, have some more comfortable chairs down there. So we're not sitting on hard plastic chairs for eight hours. Um, so, uh, be making plans to attend that. I'll have more information up there, which basically covers what I just told you. But that's this weekend, Saturday, Friday night, 6.30, and Saturday morning at 9 o'clock and in the Student Activity Center. And then um, you see an item here in your bulletin called Legacy Service, September the 25th. Um, that service is something new that uh, we're trying this year in um, a new uh, annual event that I would like to um, start this year. And continue going as long as um, as long as we feel like it's the Lord's direction to do that. Um, the idea, the general um, um, vision in it, is uh, it marks it's about one year from when um, when Steve Stetler passed away, and when when Brother Stetler passed away, it marked all of us and caused um, a lot of us, if not all of us, who knew him, to just hit the emergency brake in our lives and stop and think about why are we here. And what are we doing um, for, for someone who God had helped for so, uh, in so many powerful ways for his life to, in our opinion, be cut so short, um, reminded me of the brevity of life, reminded me that we're not guaranteed tomorrow, reminded me that, um, that really only what's done for Christ is what's going to matter. And so the idea here at this uh, every year around the last uh, couple Sundays of September, we plan to have a service. Um, uh, Rodney, Loker, R Rodney Loper, President Loper, is scheduled to come and to preach both morning and evening that day. Um, I've talked to Kent and uh, Kent Stetler, and he is talking to his mother, and they're, they're tentatively planning to be here for that service. And so um, the idea is not to, not to mourn Brother Stetler's death every year. The idea is to, is, to, is to look at his life and the legacy that he left behind and apply that to ourselves and to allow God to talk to us and to work through us um, about we're all leaving some sort of legacy behind, whether good or bad or, or powerful or minuscule, but we're all leaving some sort of memory, some sort of trail behind. People behind us are learning from us. And so uh, the idea here is, is an annual event that we stop, we, we reassess our lives, and we, uh, we allow God to talk to us uh, through this. And so... Uh, I invite, I'm inviting everyone to come, spread the word. Um, I, I hope that, that in the future it will become, uh, even now, it becomes sort of a homecoming event that we bring people from um, uh, generations in the past that are still living, and we bring uh, families and extended families and, and people who used to call this church home uh, back in for a service and to where, uh, to where we can honor somebody's life and, uh, and look at it through the lens of what kind of legacy they left behind and what kind of legacy we're leaving behind. And so uh, that's the idea. That's the 25th of September. You will not want to miss that, September 25th. And I believe that God is going to, uh, I just feel really strongly that God's leading in that direction for that day uh, and to make it an annual event. And so I'm looking forward to uh, seeing that uh, come to fruition and seeing you know, what God would do through that effort. And then uh, Fall Revival is October 4 through 9. Dr. Paul Kaufman is coming to preach that. 
Uh, that's um, coming up soon. And then the week after that, so revival ends, scheduled revival ends on Sunday the 9th. And then uh, Wednesday night um, here at the church, uh, IH Convention will be having the Southern Indiana Convention, Traveling Convention. And they will be here Wednesday night, Thursday morning at 10 a.m. and then Thursday night as well. And uh, so uh, be planning for those things. Uh, we are officially in the busy season of, of church schedule. And so um, buckle up, hang on tight, stay, keep your calendar close to you and uh, your phone and email accounts close to you. Uh, the uh, directory has all the photos uploaded to it that we have. And so there um, is an option that we can upload photos. Um, I can upload them individually. And so if you do not have a photo in the directory um, that you, you want a photo in there, um, send it to me, text, email, digital is best. Um, send it to me and, and I can upload it in there for you to have. Some of you have done that already, but the, the, the directory is finished, as much information as we have. I would encourage you, you can add birthdays, anniversaries um, to, your, uh, to your, um, your account and it will show up, um, when you click on birthdays on the app, it'll show up uh, all the birthdays in order from which one comes next. And so it's a very helpful tool. And so you'll have to enter those. I don't have all that information. Uh, so you'll have to enter that yourself or I can maybe get a list from Sister Ha. She probably has, she does the calendars and so she probably has uh, a fairly concise and complete list. Although there are some birthdays that are not on the calendar and that's not due to her overlooking them. That's due to um, maybe perhaps people haven't heeded her invitations to, to give her those birthdays. And so if your birthday anniversary is not on the calendar and you're starting to get offended, um, let her know and she will put them on there. We're not trying to hold out for anybody. And so those are the announcements that I have. Um, I took up plenty of time in giving that, but uh, don't forget these are important events that are, that are vital, I believe, vital to the, the life of the church. Church is, is so much more than coming and hearing somebody preach or hearing a song sung or praying together. Church is, is really a people, not a building. And so if we're going to exist as a church, we must be uh, in fellowship and, and together as a body of Christ uh, working together, each one has gifts and abilities, each one has strong suits, each one has weaknesses, and we blend everyone together in humility and love and charity, and we operate as a healthy body of believers, of Christians. And the, 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 the community is impacted, our lives are enriched, and our families are benefited, blessed from that, and uh, I just believe God is working and doing a great thing here at Faith Mission and I'm, I'm glad to be a part of it, and I'm glad you're a part of it, and I just encourage us to keep praying, uh, keep being together, keep fellowshipping together, uh, keep uh, loving the Lord with all we are, and God's going to do great things in us and through us. There's an orchestra piece that they have planned and prepared this morning. Let's give them our attention as they play. In the, in the orchestra this morning. Uh, thank you, Dominic, for, for playing. And I, Is this your first Sunday in the orchestra today? No. Second. Great. Well, I'm sorry I missed you last time. But uh, Dominic is leading by example. If you play an instrument 
and uh, you uh, would like to blow the dust out of that horn or, or off your guitar or whatever it is that you play, um, the orchestra has plenty of room in it. And uh, Dominic is leading by example. Even as a young man, you can do that, young lady. Even as an older man, uh, Caleb, you can do that too, um, if, you, if you wanted to. And others who would want to could do that. And uh, so um, thank you, orchestra. It adds, each instrument adds to it and, uh, and, and glorifies God and, and helps, to, helps to usher in his presence and worship to him. Amen. I believe uh, Miss Moore has uh, our special this morning, and so she's coming at this time. Let's give her our attention. She ministers through music today. I was recently struck um, during one of our in-services when our new assistant principal talked about how um, for many years he taught in public schools and public settings and how he was blessed to not necessarily be able to teach the Bible um, as a religious source, but he was able to use it as a literature source. And he said, I'll never forget the time that he said, we're reading through the Old Testament and we would talk about different elements. And he said, um, one particular day, they were reading through a passage where again, the Israelites had again turned their back on God and done something to, you know, disobedient. Um, and one of the girls spoke up and she was like, He's going to forgive him again, isn't he? And um, he said it was a prime opportunity for him to speak about how so different God is from us. Because in our, in our physical, you know, idea of forgiving someone, they didn't deserve it. They've done it many, many, many times and, you know, enough is enough and it's over. But he said, you know, it was just striking to him how it finally stuck, that there was something different about God than there was about other human beings. Um, and so it struck me how important it is for us as Christians to make sure that we're standing for truth, even in those little ways that we might not think that they're as striking to people as they ought to be, because they're not those big wow moments. But after time, it does start to stick. So the song that I've chosen today uh, speaks to that.
Thank you, Miss Moore, for that song and that admonition. And I believe it always pays to stand for truth. Yeah. Always, every single time. And uh, I'm thankful that we can take refuge in truth and know that truth, absolute truth, capital T truth, not what we think is true or what we want to be true, but what is true based on the authority of God's word. I'm thankful that that is a refuge and something that we can and lean on and, and hide inside of sometimes, hide behind as the enemy hurls its darts. We can know that truth will stand and we can depend on it and it can be our shield and our buckler. Amen. Joy Ambassadors, you are dismissed this morning. And uh, wow, if you saw their faces when I said that, it was like in unison. This whole, they all just instantly were ready. So the rest of you can be as excited about staying as they are about going. We'll have a great service. No, I say that tongue in cheek. You guys are a great, great congregation to preach to. And, um, and the Lord is, is good and has blessed this place. And these people. Joshua chapter 1 is where I direct your attention this morning. And um, the song that Ms. Moore chose to sing, her admonition of truth, uh, of, of uh, standing for truth, uh, dovetails nicely with what I believe the Lord is, is um, asking us to look at today. And my, my goal this morning is to cause us to remember and to realize who God is and what he's commanded us to do, and what he's promised he would do. A couple of weeks ago, we uh, looked at Jeremiah and Josiah, and uh, we looked at God's command to them, or God's um, calling to them, to Jeremiah specifically. I uh, looked at his calling to Jeremiah to, uh, to be a prophet of the nations. And uh, you remember Jeremiah's uh, response to that? He said, I'm too young. I'm a child, he says. I can't do this. Lord, I'm a child, and there's two instructions that God gave to Jeremiah. I said, one, don't say you're too young, and number two, don't be afraid of their faces. Because God quantifies that, or he gives a reason why he gave those instructions, or he gives a reason why he should not say he's too young, why he should not be afraid of their faces, is because I am with thee to deliver thee. That was the promise. Okay, God gave instructions, you do this, you be a prophet of the nations, you don't say you're too young because I will be with thee, I will be with you and to deliver you. This morning, I, I want us to look at this simple, just simple chapter 1 verse 9, a, a, a verse that hopefully, if you don't have it memorized yet, it would be a good one to memorize and one to write down, one to put on a post-it note, stick it on your bathroom mirror, Review your mirror uh, somewhere where it'll get your attention, a place that you spend a lot of time, and, uh, and, uh, or on your refrigerator, depending on uh, what you value. Maybe you, you value your appetite more than your looks in the mirror, and so you spend more time at the refrigerator. Uh, that sometimes summarizes me. But stick that wherever you, wherever you keep sacred truth to remind you of this verse. Um, it's one to live by, and I just I know it's familiar, but I just felt like God was... Um, admonishing us. And you know, I'll just be transparent with you. God is speaking to me from this verse, maybe more than anybody else. I was talking to someone recently and they said, um, they, they uh, asked the question or made a statement, oh, maybe you are preaching to yourself more than you're preaching to us. And I, and, and my mind, as, as I thought about that statement, um, oftentimes, oftentimes, if not every time, we preachers preach to ourselves all week long uh, and preparing for a message before we preach it to a congregation because there's no such thing, or it's challenging and probably a little bit hypocritical uh, to preach a message that you yourself are not willing to abide by and to live. And so uh, we do that. And so this message is for me, and uh, you can listen to it if you want to. It's good to have our, our friend over here uh, with us this morning. Great to have you come in. I, I caught your name, but I don't remember it now. But it's great to have you here this morning. And uh, go over and make him welcome this morning and, uh, and welcome him to the service after the service is over. But introduce yourself to him and tell him you're glad to see him. I, uh, Joshua chapter 1 verse 9. Have I not commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. The Lord thy God is with thee. 
whithersoever thou goest, or wherever you go. Father, thank you for the way you have conducted this service to challenge us and to admonish us to stand for truth and to be strong and courageous. Father, we pray that as we look at your word, as we look to this one verse in the context of all these verses, that you would help us to see and to realize who you are and uh, your provision with every promise. Father, give anointing and unction to speaker and, and anointing to listener this morning. May each one of us um, come from this place further up the road spiritually and, and may our roots grow deeper in the things of God and may you become more important and may we fall more in love with you today than we were yesterday. And we'll just thank you and praise you for the, for the work that you do today and for your involvement in this service. We ask in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. This uh, Miss Moore's song, as as she was singing it, I thought, well, what a what a uh, more would there be a more appropriate song? And perhaps there is, but a more appropriate song to uh, sing on the forefront or leading up to this message of of being strong and courageous. It's a uh, it's a courageous thing and requires a, a measure of strength to stand for truth and to stand up for what's right and to do what's right and to be known as an individual of truth. This instruction was given to Joshua on the, uh, on the eve of, of the, the children of Israel crossing the Jordan River, this great monumental change, this monumental event in the nation of Israel and the, in Joshua's life and the Israelites' life and this fulfillment of a, of a promise to God that they would go into the promised land flowing with milk and honey, that this, uh, this uh, uh, event taking place, this verse that, was, that I read for your hearing, was given to Joshua by God at the beginning or before this event, this crossing the Jordan River takes place. Now it's important to understand the history or some of the background, the events leading up to and why this is an important uh, verse for Joshua and the children of Israel and why it's important for us. You see, this book of Joshua was written right after Moses dies. In fact, chapter 1 of Joshua, verse 1 says, Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun. And, he, and, and then there's recorded for us what God says to Joshua. And at the end of that, God tells Joshua, Don't be afraid. Be strong and courageous. Don't be dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee wherever you go. And so we see that Joshua is coming into a new position of leadership. He's coming into new responsibilities. And, and in fact, um, earlier um, here in this chapter, we see uh, there's the phrase that uh, they are to go across and they're to, depend on, they're to depend upon God for they've not been this way before is the phrase that's here in Joshua uh, chapter 1. And, and God is encouraging them to trust in him, to trust in God for their, uh, I'm sorry, chapter 3 verse 4. If you've not been this way before, there is, God is encouraging them to look and to be strong and courageous and to trust in God for they've never gone this way before and God has promised to help them. Wherever they go, they're leaving what's familiar. They're leaving their hometown, their home territory. They're leaving, uh, not home, but what they called home. They lived there for 40 years in the wilderness. They've wandered there, and God is, in, is admonishing them to be strong and courageous on the forefront of something new and something challenging that they're going to have to face. This is easily applied to our own lives. Although we don't know, we don't have maybe perhaps a, de a definitive promise from God or a word from God saying you're going to do this or that or be here or there in the next little while, but we know that there are always challenges, there are always obstacles, there are always uh, new things for us to encounter and for us to experience. And so whenever we think about the context of this verse given to Joshua, we realize that he, it was given to him after this, uh, this very uh, patriarchal, this, this man of faith, the servant of the Lord passes away. The mantle is passed on to Joshua. The responsibilities are passed to Joshua. He's going to a new venture of life, a new responsibility, and God is encouraging him to be strong and courageous. Look to God in times of uncertainty, in times of newness, in times of new opportunities and new challenges. Look to God. Joshua we have to understand also, though, that not just the, the history matters and the context matters, but who Joshua is matters. Go Joshua is a man of God. In fact, Joshua is a man of faith. Probably uh, more accurately said, uh, or, or for this message at least, understanding Joshua is a man of faith is important because Joshua was one of two 
uh, men who spied out the promised land. Remember Joshua and Caleb, they go, they spy out the promised land. They're the only two of the 12 who come back and give a good report. They're the only two who come back and say, hey, yes, they're, yes we are grasshoppers to these men. Yes, they are giants. Yes, they're, they're fortified cities. Yes, all those things, but God is with us. And Joshua and Caleb had a faith that believed that God could conquer whatever challenge there was out there. And so Joshua, being a man of God and a man of faith, is an important characteristic to know in context of this command that God gives to him. Joshua is admonished, as, and, and, and we may find it interesting that why would Joshua need to be admonished to be, to be strengthened and be courageous? I mean, he, after all, was one of two who came back and said, hey, we can take these guys. God's on our side. We can defeat the giants. We can defeat these fortified cities. He's already got enough faith for that. He's got enough courage to speak different than his ten uh, fellow uh, Israelite brethren. He's got enough courage to attack a, 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 a civilization of giants. He's got enough courage to do this. Why would God be telling him to be strong and have a good courage? Why would God be commanding and reminding him to do this? I believe partially at least it is because there was something coming that Joshua had never encountered before. Joshua had something coming down the road that he had never yet encountered. He had never experienced. He had never uh, fought this battle before. We think about David and Goliath, the story of David and Goliath, and how David uh, he comes to King Saul, and, and, Saul er, and Goliath is in the, in the field and, and hurling insults at the Israelites and their God and, and at their King Saul. And, 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 and David says, look, we can take this guy. There's no reason why we can't defeat Goliath. He says, look, I've defeated a bear, I've defeated a lion. The strength of the Lord has come upon me at two different times to tear these animals in half. Why can't God defeat this giant Goliath again? David was going to face an enemy he'd never faced before, but he was going based on the, based on the assurance of the help that God had given him in the past. And yet he had to muster up strength and courage to do it again. You and I may face experiences in our lives of a new season of our lives, maybe a new responsibility, or maybe uh, uh, something new, and we're encountering a new job, or uh, maybe the, 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 the addition of someone into our family, whether it's through marriage, or through birth, or through adoption, or some addition of someone to our family. Maybe it's the newness of a new community and a, a new church family. I don't, I don't know what all new things may be happening in your life, but we're all experiencing something that would be new to us. And I want to remind us that we need not go to something new without the faith that God can help us. If God has called us to something, if, if we are walking in obedience to God or walking in the light as He's in the light, we can know we have fellowship with one another, brethren uh, and brothers and sisters in Christ, but also with our Heavenly Father. We have fellowship with Him. That means that we share together in our burdens. And so as we go, as we do that new thing, and as we go and we enter that new season, as we go and we, we, uh, we, we encounter new challenges and new obstacles, we can go and the courage and the strength of the Lord, knowing that as he helped us in the past to bring us to this point, there is new strength and new courage that God is going to give us to accomplish whatever he's asked us to do. Joshua is a man of faith. And this admonition, this command of being strong and courageous comes to those whose faith is firmly placed in God. God challenges us and, and calls us to be people, men and women, boys and girls, teenagers of faith, believing, believing that God can do what He says He will do. If we go to the New Testament book of Hebrews, uh, you will read there in the faith chapter that faith, uh, in summary, faith is, um, is, what, is, is believing what God says. Faith is believing that God really uh, uh, says, uh, believing that God really can do what He says He will do. The second component of faith is being committed to doing what God wants, what God says. And the third component of real, authentic, genuine faith is being surrendered to the results. And so we say, well, God, I have faith that you can move this mountain. But then when God doesn't move the mountain, our faith is shaken. Friends, the, re the, the true display of faith is when we surrender our wants and our desires and what we believe to be right. We surrender that to God's sovereignty and to God's power and His will according to His infinite wisdom. There may be things that we encounter in our lives that are beyond our scope of understanding. 
things that we scratch our head or we, uh, we uh, uh, allow big tears to flow down our faces and we maybe even lift our voices and grief to God and say, Lord, why? God, why is this happening? And I don't think it's wrong to ask that question of why or even to, even to, to express our concern, our frustration to God of God, this can't be right. This can't be fair. Why, God, would you allow this to happen? But true faith, True faith is measured out in our surrender to allowing God, who has a perfect track record and a perfect uh, history, who's never made a mistake, allowing God to be God over the situations in our lives. Even if we disagree. In our society, we've gotten so used to getting things our way that whenever we don't get things our way with God, we think that God uh, is betraying us. We think that maybe we're not spiritual enough if God didn't give us our way. Or we think that maybe there's something we're doing wrong if God didn't answer our prayer. And friends, there may be room for speculation or for introspection there to, to, to ask God to show us if there's anything he's not pleased with, any reason why he would do something other than our, our request. But friends, we ought to always remember that it's God who has infinite wisdom and not Aaron. It's God who has infinite wisdom and not you. It's God who is perfect and not you. It's God who breathed the world into existence, not you. It's God who, who created everything that we know and see, not you and not me. It's God who has called us. We didn't call ourselves. It's God who drew us through his son Jesus. It's God who drew us uh, to himself. We didn't just all of a sudden wake up one day and in our own, uh, our own uh, abilities say, you know what, I think I want to be a Christian today. No, the Bible tells us very clearly that no one comes to the Father except they come through Christ and the Holy Spirit draws them. And so if we, whatever we are, whoever we are, we must understand that we are only what we are as we are that in Christ. We are only as good as we are because we are good in Christ. We are only as, as righteous as we might be because of Christ's righteousness in us. And when we begin to walk away or remove that, our righteousness quickly fades and leaves because it's tied to Christ. And so our faith is important. Joshua being a man of faith is important. Him being a man who is dependent upon God is important. And so friends, I want to just challenge us this morning. I want to challenge myself this morning that we do not begin to look to our own abilities or our own resources to accomplish the responsibilities that God has given us, but we look at the God who has called us, the God who has led us, the God who has, who has equipped us, perhaps. But we look to that God, that source, as the one who we place our faith in. This command was given to a man of faith. And the command is firm and strong. It's clear. There's no speculation on what God was saying here. It is crystal clear. He is telling us, be strong and courageous. Be strong and have a good courage. Don't be afraid. New Testament says this, that we've not been given a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. That we as followers of God, as believers in Christ, are not to be fearful people. He says, uh, God tells Joshua, do not be afraid. And the New Testament tells us, don't be afraid, but as believers, as, as those whose minds are being transformed by the Word of God, by the renewing of our mind daily, as we continue to surrender to God's leadership and sovereignty and His Lordship in our lives, that, that we surrender our minds to God and that God transforms our minds to not be a people of fear, but be a people of trust and faith and power and love and reason. That's why standing for truth matters. But that's also sometimes why it requires the strength of God to stand for truth. In a situation recently, not connected at all to this church, in a situation recently where there is a certain uh, story being told about a set of circumstances and the narrative was being spun to uh, fit somebody's agenda. And me being the person that I am, like it or lump it, I had some sort of an obligation to just interject my concerns to the situation. And in that process, ruffled some feathers, in that process offended some people, people that I love dearly. 
And as I began to have these conversations with these people, I began to realize that truth was quickly escaping the scenario. It really wasn't about what was true, what was right. It was about what felt good and what seemed most advantageous to the people involved in it. And I can't help but think that scenario takes place in maybe each one of our lives on a, on, a, on a frequent basis. If I'm not careful, I can begin to live my life based on what makes sense to me and based on what feels good to me and based on what, what I want and based on what fits my personality and based on what fits my interests and based on what fits my family. And if we're not careful, we begin to let truth slip out the door. But what we need to do is come back to center and realize that, that we must be firmly rooted and grounded and stand for truth. But that takes strength and that takes courage. You look at our society around us. And at every hand, truth is being attacked. Our families are being attacked. Christianity is being attacked. Biblical values are being attacked. Our country is in an, is an all-out war against truth in our borders. And if a person, no matter how holy or righteous we might feel or we might be, if a person begins to walk away from biblical truth, capital T, ap -t truth, absolute truth, we, our foundation begins to get some cracks in it and begins to get some shifting in it. And before we realize it, we'll wake up one day and we'll, truth will be out the back door and we'll be standing on a pile of rubble that has no stability, no consistency, no security in it because it's not built on truth, it's built on what we want to happen. This is not a philosophy or concept that's way out there. It's right in here. Because it's a tool of the enemy to attack our families and to attack our individuals, individuals and to attack our church and attack our community and attack our country and our world. I was talking to somebody on the phone and, and they were telling me they, they wouldn't be able to be uh, at a service recently and and they said, we're not, we're not running out on your pastor. I just want you to know we're not going to be there. We've got a family event. I said, okay, that's, that's great. I appreciate it. Let me know. Family's important. You know, all these things. And they said, we know we realize the enemy is really, really attacking, really attacking our, our families and our country. He said, I remember whenever, um, I, think, I think he said his sister, I think it was, his sister, um, his sister's husband, sorry, his sister's husband lost his job many years ago. And he went to um, some government agency and, and requested for uh, requested financial assistance because he had lost his job. And they told him, well, if you weren't married, you'd get more assistance. This was 30 plus years ago. And he said, my only thought is that the government doesn't like families being together. They're, I mean, they're incentivizing divorce. They're incentivizing uh, division in, in American families. And that was 30 years ago. And so I, I responded to him. I said, well, I said, I called him by name and said, well, it's, 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 really, it's really the enemy working through whatever means he can, in this case, the government. Yeah. Friends, family, husband and wife marriage and, and, and having children reproducing is a biblical, biblical model straight from the words of God. One man, one woman, and a quiver full. Whatever that looks like for you. According to God's divine leadership. A quiverful. That's what God instructs us to do. That's what God's plan is for humanity, for society. It is so much wrapped up in that. There's the, there's the an analogy of, of the church uh, and the bride. The church and Jesus. The church is the bride and Jesus the groom. There's the analogy of the relationship between the uh, husband and wife and the marriage relationship and the relationship between God, uh, between Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and the church living out here on earth, and the relationships are so very similar. They're supposed to be. In fact, the husband and wife is supposed to be an example and in, 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 in in an analogy of what Christ is to the body of Christ. Marriage and family is, is drawn up in the infinite wisdom of God. And it takes strength and courage sometimes to stand up for truth. Strength and courage to do what's right. Strength and truth. Strength and courage to, to do what God is asking us to do. This man named Joshua was a man of faith. And I believe that if we want to have the strength and courage like Joshua had, we must be people of faith. We must be people who are willing, who choose, willfully choose to believe that what God says is true. We have to, that's where we start. 
You say, what is faith? Well, faith is substance and evidence. Faith is real. Faith is not some, some fantastical or, or some fat, fantastic or fantasaical uh, idea way out there. But, but, but faith is something we can touch and we can feel, we can experience. Faith is saying that I saw God help me and, and, and God protected me. And I almost got in this accident last week and God protected me. That's that based off of who, what happened there. I believe God will do this. Based off of watching God heal my loved one of an infirmity, I believe God can do this. Based off of what God has recorded in his word, he delivered people from bondage and sin, delivered uh, uh, the Israelites from captivity, delivered uh, blind people from their blindness, gave them sight, delivered uh, adulteresses of their sins, gave them forgiveness for sins, delivered uh, the woman at the well who was married five times, the man she was living with wasn't her husband, delivered her and forgave her. If God can do all of that based on that evidence, that we know is historical, that we know is real. If God can do all that, God can do this for me. Amen. That's what faith is. Yeah. And so, friends, we have to choose to believe that what God says is really true. That's the foundation to faith is believing that these words really are the word of God. Not to be added to or taken away from, but these words and the word of God is absolute truth. Yeah. That's primary and fundamental to having faith. Being a person of faith is believing what God says. But then it's being committed to doing what this book says. It's being committed to following through and obeying and actually uh, living out the commandments here. Living out the instructions. Living out the principles. Living out the, 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 the teachings. The words of Christ. The, the, the words of the epistles. Uh, the, the, uh, the holy, inspired, divinely inspired words of God that are written down for us. It's believing and being committed to doing what God says. I've known people who believe that God is real, believe that it takes, that you can't go to heaven without being saved through the blood of Christ. They, they believe that, but their actions and their behavior does not match what they say they believe. I've known people who say, yes, I know that, I know that getting drunk is a sin, but they still choose to get drunk. Their behavior does not match what they say they know to be true. And friends, faith, genuine faith is not only believing what God says, but being committed to doing what God says. And then as I said earlier, the third component of faith is leaving the results to Him. We let God lead our lives. And if we want to be, known, if we want to be confident of God's helping us and being strong and of good courage, of forsaking fear and not being afraid, of not being dismayed or discouraged or pushed away or, 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 uh, or, or alarmed and that sort of thing, then we must realize we must be people of faith like Joshua was. We must be people who, who realize that without Christ, without God, we are nothing. And we must realize that it is God who is with us wherever we go. We need not go alone. We need not go in our own strength and our own wisdom. We need not go in our own security, but we go in the help and the strength and the promise of God's presence. People of faith. There are conditions. These promises that God gives us are not just uh, willy-nilly conditions he throws out to, all right, if you hear this promise, it's for you. But oftentimes, if not every time, there's a condition attached to every promise. If you do this, I'll do this. If you'll confess, I'll forgive. If you be a person of faith, I'll give you strength and courage. Friends, let's not go from this place in fear or in, or in concern or in alarm of what may happen, but let's trust God with the results. Let's be people of faith. Let's, be, let's believe what God says, be committed to doing what he says, and lead the results to him. Walk in faith, not by sight, trusting in God, committing our lives to him, and God will help us, and we'll receive strength and encouragement fulfill whatever responsibilities he has for us. Let's stand for dismissal prayer. Brother Caleb, would you dismiss us in prayer this morning, please? Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this service. We thank you for the body of Christ. We thank you for bringing us together to love one another, that the love that you and the Father have would be in us. And Lord, we thank you for this message. We thank you that you're going to help us be strong and be of good courage looking to you, if we would be a person of faith, that we would just see Jesus in front of us, Lord, that we would have all the courage we would need, if we would just get everything off of our eyes, Lord, and just look to him, and Lord, just be with us.